Hello and welcome to SeedProd. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put your WordPress website into maintenance mode in 2023. So right here, I have a clean installation of WordPress. And if we look at the main page, I just have the default theme installed. For this demonstration, it doesn't really matter what you have installed. And we're going to be using SeedProd to accomplish the maintenance mode page. Seaprod is the best drag and drop WordPress website builder with over 1 million professionals. By using Seaprod, you can create a complete WordPress website from scratch, as well as landing pages, maintenance mode pages, custom login pages, and much more. Let's go ahead and get this installed. You can come over to seaprod.com or click the link in the description below. And then once you're here, you can click on the get Seaprod button and select the account that makes the most sense for you. I'm going to be using the pro version in this video. Once you have an account set up, let's go ahead and click on login. Okay, great. On the left hand side, let's enter your email address, your password and click on login. Once you're logged into the Seedprod account, let's click on downloads. It's the second tab from the left here and we'll click on download Seedprod Pro. Great. Now we need the license key here on the bottom left hand corner. We can click this little icon here to copy that to clipboard. We can go ahead and close this tab. Great, I'm gonna come back to the WordPress admin and on the left-hand side, we'll go to plugins and add new. At the top here, let's click on upload plugin and we have choose file. We can click here and select that zip file that we just downloaded. Or if you're using a similar or same browser, you can click down here and drag this zip file and drop it right here. Next, we can click on install now and activate the plugin. Next, we can paste our license key that we copied earlier right here and click on verify key. And you should see a green success message here in the top right corner. So on the left hand side, we have landing pages and theme builder, some setup and different options here. If you want to create a WordPress theme from scratch, you'd use the theme builder. If you just want to deal with landing pages, we'll click on landing pages. And here we can create coming soon mode pages. We can have maintenance mode, login page 404. And then down here we have generic landing pages that you can fully customize, such as call to actions, for example. So what we want to be using is the maintenance mode feature. Let's go ahead and set up a maintenance mode page. Next, Seedprod is going to ask you to choose a new page template. And our in-house designers have created these beautiful templates already pre-made. So you can just put one in your website immediately with a single click, or you can start with a blank template and create your own from scratch. Right now we're using the filter here. You can click on all to see all of the templates that come with Seedprod for landing pages. Right now we're just sorted by maintenance mode. So here you can come down and find one that you like. There's a magnifying glass here to preview them. And then once you're ready, you can click on the orange check mark. I'm just gonna pick a random one here. Let's go with this one. So there we go. Now we're inside of the seed prod page builder. And on the right hand side, we can see the actual template that we just imported. And on the left hand side, we have our blocks that we can pull into the page. So for example, if we wanna put a list here, we just take the list block and we drop it in here. And then you click the block settings and you can modify the settings here. So you can add block items, the colors, the spacing, alignment, and the advanced section. And this is basically the premise for the whole page builder and how it works. You take a block from the left hand side and put it into your page and then modify the look of it. You'll see these lines around all of the different sections here and the rows and the columns. And that's how you organize your page. So right now I actually have my browser zoomed in by 150% just so it's easier to see in the video. So some of the text might look a little different than what it's supposed to, but we can change this by clicking, for example, the block settings here on your page and we have the font size. So I could just click here and change that. So it's more appropriate for the design. Here we have the second header down here below that says we're doing some maintenance. We can do that and change the font size for this as well, if you like. If you want to change the text, you have the text box here. So you can just change and update this right here. We have the alignment and we have the level. This is just for semantics as well as advanced settings here. So you could change the color if you like. So for example, if you want that to stand out a little bit more, you could do that. Under advanced, we also have options for spacing, attributes, device visibility. So for example, if you want to have something hidden on mobile or on desktop, you can see it gets grayed out for that device. We also have animation effects here. So this is entrance animation. So when the page loads, for example, if you want something to flip in or you could have it fade in or whatever you wish. So something you might want to do, you could select the whole purple section here. That's everything that's in this page. We could go under advanced animation effects and we could just do a simple fade in just to kind of look at a little bit nice. So the whole page has a fade in effect when they load the page. Let's go back to blocks here. And on the left hand side here, we have the big image. We can select the block settings here. And again, this will update based on whatever block that is. So we have an image here. We can delete this and you can upload your own image using the media library. Or if you like, Seedprod comes with the stock image feature. So we can click here and do a search. So I did a search for maintenance and I'll just select a random picture here. And I think that looks good. And again, you can select any image that you wish. And we have image size options and we have the link type. So if you want to add a link, you can do that. Or if you want to use the light box, you could use this. So when people click on it, it highlights that picture and makes it look nice. So you can see it in the light box. There's no real point for this page, but 
that option is available if you need it. We also have templates. If you want the image to look a little bit nicer, you can quickly add a drop shadow, for example, or put a white border around it, which is a little hard to see on the white background. So we can come back up. And you have advanced options for all of the same type of things, the shadow, you have the image border. You can also change the border radius. This is the corners. So for example, if we put 25, you can see that the image is now rounded off. If we come down to the page, you have more options here. You can change the text here. We also have a opt-in box here for email addresses. So if you want to collect people's emails, you can do so. And on the left-hand side, we have options for the fields. So if you want to show the, the name field or an opt-in confirmation, you can go ahead and do that. We have the size of this from small, medium to large, as well as the alignment. And we also have the submit button so you can change the text here right now it says notify me, which means they want to be notified when your page or website is back online. Or if you launched, you have the background color for your button. You can change that as well. We also have the success action. So after they submit, what do you want to have happen right now? By default, it shows a message saying thank you. And that will be in touch or you can redirect them to another page if you want. We also have templates for this so you can change the look of this. So if I click here, you can see that that turns to a dark box. There's different border options, transparency, and you can just select one that you wish to use. I like the dark input here. Let's go under advanced and you have the same type of options for fonts, the field options, buttons, spacing, attributes, device visibility, and animation. I'm just gonna select this one and let's bring the text size down for this a little bit, right about there. I think that looks fine. And I'm just gonna save this because we haven't saved in a while. And on the bottom left here, we actually have the global settings. And here's where you can change your fonts and your colors, background, and custom CSS. Right now we're using Noto for our headers. We could change this to something else. I'll go with Nanudo and let's use maybe a higher version here for the weight. And then we have the body text font. So this is the normal text that we could use maybe Nanudo as well, but a lighter weight here. So let's go with maybe light. And there you go, I think that looks pretty clean. If we come under colors, we have the different options here. For example, our buttons. If we change this to something else, you can see that it gets updated as well as our links as well. So I'll just use the same color. I'll just copy this one and we'll go ahead and paste that. We also have the background here. So right now it's white. We could change this maybe to a little bit of a light gray. That way you can see the border around the image here. We also have the background options here. You can do a gradient, solid color right now, a background image. You can change the position. You can also add a video background or a background slideshow. And then lastly at the bottom, if you have the skills to do so, you can add your own custom CSS here as well. Now you may notice that this one here is still orange. So you can actually override the global styles here by putting a color on the block itself. So if I select this block and we look under advanced, it looks like the, a color was set for this one already. So what we can do, if we wanna use the global styles, we can just clear this and that'll use the default. We also have the global colors here to quickly select them if we wanna do that. Or we can pick a completely different color if we like. I'm just gonna keep the green there. I think that looks nice. And once we're ready, let's go ahead and save this and we can give it a quick preview. Right, so this is what the page will look like. And it's actually a little bit high. There's no spacing up here. So what we can do is select the section, go under advanced and spacing. We can actually add some padding here to the top. I'll do maybe 25 and that'll just push it down from the top a little bit. Let's refresh this and I'll preview again. And there you go. You can see the little 25% increase. If we refresh again, you can see we also have that animation effect where it fades in. So I think that looks pretty good. Our image looks good. Our fonts look good and our colors look good. So what we can do is close this and come back. Make sure it's saved again. And I just want to show one more thing before we put this live. We have the block settings here for the email opt-in. I just want to show you that on the top here, we're on the design tab, but you can click on connect and you can connect your opt-in forms to your favorite third-party email marketing service. So for example, if you wanted to use constant contact, you can click connect, connect a new account, and you can paste your API key in here. And you'll, you would get that API key from Constant Contact or any of these services. If you need help, please contact their support. They usually have good documentation on how to find this API key if you need help. Again, you simply paste that in here, give an optional connection name and click connect. And then that email marketing service would be able to manage your emails. And then the last tab here, we have page settings. You can give it a page title, which is no real reason. You can do page title, page status, seed prod link isolation mode there's different options here for the maintenance mode we really don't need to show too many of these if you have somebody working on your website you can actually use a bypass so you could add their ip address in here or a specific role and then when they log into your website or see the website they will not see the maintenance mode which helps them work on your website it's a good way to get past the maintenance mode page you also have seo options here as well you can put in and some scripts if you need to put any in your header body and footer once we're ready let's go ahead and save this 
and let's exit out of here and it's going to pop up a maintenance mode is not active would you like to activate it now and show this page to visitors so this is a good feature you can click yes to activate or no to close so if you're ready to go of course click yes uh, i'm going to say no and i'll show you a different option here if you forget to activate it you can come back to the landing pages section and you'll see maintenance mode here but there's a little button here that you can just toggle on and this means that maintenance mode is on now. You'll also be notified by the orange button here in the top right corner. So now when we go to our front page, we can go ahead and refresh and you're still not gonna see it. And the reason is we're actually logged in as the admin. So let's go ahead and log out and we'll go back to the front page. And if we check it out, we can see the maintenance mode page that we created. And there you go, Cprod makes it extremely easy to create drag and drop websites, landing pages, coming soon pages, and of course, maintenance mode pages where you have full control over the look and feel for your website. If you found this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and check out these videos to learn more about what Seedprod can do for you. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.